Today I'm gonna to show you the best desktop editing software for short video content. Text, effects, animations, transitions. And it also has built-in really cool features of transcribing the footage, creating and customizing captions. And it even recognizes HDR footage and lets you color grade everything. It is the desktop version of CapCut, the famous smartphone editing app. I'm gonna show you how I edited this video and what else can you find in here. <laughs> Yeah, I am Henry, and this channel will help you with the tech tools to be created. So let's just dive in and I'm gonna show you into more detail. Okay, so for downloading and installing, you know the drill. Access the website, download it, install it, I'm not even gonna cover it. And when you open it, you can start creating a new project. And in my case, I have two other ones here, so I'm just gonna open this one. And you see immediately that the shape of the software is just very similar to any other editing software on desktop that you might find. So you have your media pool here on the left, a preview panel here, details or inspector or whatever you want to call it here up on the right and your timeline down here in which you can have many different layers which is totally different from the smartphone version and to import something you just have to drag your files onto the software the moment that you click it you're already going to be seeing a preview here in the player panel if you want to stop it you can just hit space now one thing you're going to notice and i'm going to zoom in here to show you is that there are these two handles here on the sides of each clip so if you just click over here or here you're gonna be able to see them. And in this one is different, for example, because this is the in and out points. Meaning that if you just drag them around while they're here, you're gonna be able to set what's the beginning of the clip, where you wanna begin showing it, and where you wanna end it. So if you set it like that, before you pull it to the timeline, you're gonna see that it just brings exactly that piece that you asked it to. So you don't have to trim it before you import it, and you don't have to put all the clip inside the timeline and then split it to get just the piece that you want. And now a side note for anyone using Apple, Oppo or any kind of camera that uses different color spaces or picture profiles, CapCut recognizes them. So if I just drag and drop HLG footage, for example, here, it's just going to tell me that the color space is not united because the timeline is in Rec 709 and the clip is in Rec 2020 HDR. So it immediately asks me if I want to adapt it to the timeline and if I say yeah, then you're going to be able to see it perfectly normal. In the smartphone version, you end up losing a little bit of time by cutting it before importing or having to trim it after it's already on the timeline. And if you set it as a list, you can also see the frames from start to finish. This way, it makes it easier to find the precise point you want from each video or just skip directly to the part that you are interested in. Now, CapCut is produced by the same company that makes TikTok, so there's a massive integration between both of them. And in the music tab, you really notice it because you can log into your TikTok account and you can find some of the tracks from there directly. Now to create this timeline, first I focused on trimming my own clips. So I came up here and I did exactly what I showed you. And then you're gonna see that I shot it vertically with the camera and it's not turning it automatically. So all you have to do is click on it on the timeline here and you can come up to the inspector and just change the rotate to minus 90, for example, enter, and it's going to apply it. You can also use this small wheel over here to turn it around the way that you prefer. And as scale goes, you can just use the arrows here or the slider and even faster, you can just drag the corner over here and it's gonna snap to the edge. And with the clip still selected, you're gonna be able to see many kinds of adjustments that you can still do. One of them being to stabilize, to change a little bit the face, the body, to cut out the person using chroma key or auto cutout, and also some basic masking like splitting, film strip or circle if you just wanna show a little piece of the video that you have selected. If you wanna treat the audio of the clip, here are the controls and you can fade in, out and change the volume and adjust things like that. For speed, which is really cool in the smartphone app also, you have the normal timing speeds here, but you also got the curves that you have over there. Meaning that you can use one of the predefined speed ramps over here or just do your own. Now the animations for each clip sit inside over here, which is a little bit of a different logic between these and other editing softwares in which all the effects and things would be in the same place. So if you just click any of them, you're gonna be able to see a small preview and it is going to be automatically applied. You can choose in, out, or you can choose a combo. And in the adjustment panel, you're gonna be able to see what I just told you about the color space over here. You can set the opacity of the layer, you can include a LUT if you want. And in the adjustment part over here, you can do a basic color correction with the help of vector scopes, which is amazing just to be present in a free software like this. Now these changes can be done in an adjustment layer that sits on top of everything. Or you can come down here to the right and just say, apply to all, and it's going to apply to all video clips on the timeline. The controls that you have easily accessible on the smartphone app are all over here on the left. So if you want to split, trash, freeze frame, or just reverse or mirror some sort of clip, you can do it all over here. You can also rotate and crop whatever you want. The timeline space is very simple, but it has some features that are really cool and that should actually be implemented in other softwares. 
First, it's going to automatically add a color label to all of your media, meaning that you can identify very easily looking at the timeline if it's a video clip, an audio of some sort of effect or something like that. But if you pay attention to the left, you're gonna be able to see that there's an icon identifying what's on that layer, even if it's farther away and you cannot see it on the screen right now. Pretty simple and handy. Now to preview the timeline, you only have to move the mouse sideways. You don't have to click anywhere. And in my workstation, it's doing it very smoothly, but I don't know if in least powerful computers, it's gonna do the same. So just to be sure you're getting the best out of your machine, check out these options over here in the menu. So just go up to the menu, global settings, and be sure that everything is ticked. You wanna use hardware for encoding and decoding, Rendering the interface with the GPU or the graphics card is usually gonna be faster. And the proxies option gets your videos and creates a lower resolution version of them. So that you can edit faster, but don't worry because it's going to output the video in the highest resolution. Another thing to change is the quality of the preview. It can be performance optimized or just quality. And to change the aspect ratio, you don't need to go back into project settings or anything like that. Just below the preview, you're gonna find this box and you can just click whatever format you prefer. Now for me, especially the working with layers in the desktop version is so much better than the smartphone one. And that you have very limited visual working space to do it on your smartphone. Another interesting thing is that if you're moving things around in the timeline, it's going to try to put it on an empty track. So it's actually difficult for you to trim something by mistake. But being desktop, you have also the advantage of using your keyboard to access some shortcuts. So if you come up here to the right, you're gonna be able to see that besides export, there's this shortcut button. And here you're gonna have two different sets of shortcuts, shortcut one and two that you can choose from depending on what you're more used to. But mainly they look very similar to the keyboard shortcuts you would be using in DaVinci or Premiere, for example. So if you wanna access the split mode, which is also called the blade in many other softwares, you're gonna press B. Auto snapping, zoom in and out with Ctrl plus and minus. Another really cool feature that should be much easier in other softwares is just to do a voiceover when you want it. Now clicking record opens up this box over here in which you can choose which microphone you're gonna be using, the volume, and you can already see that it's working over here. On the text type, my favorite function is the auto caption. It transcribes directly from your video whatever you're saying into captions that you can customize as you want, and it just makes everything so much simpler. Now Premiere has this function also, and it also works pretty well. But the customization process is very clunky. One other function that is really cool is the text to speech. And just to illustrate how this process would work, let me just add a default text over here by clicking add text, and then it's gonna appear here on the timeline. And up here in the inspector, we're gonna be able to change whatever we want right now. So I'm just going to type something like... Okay, so right now it just looks like a fixed text on screen like this. But if I click it, and now up here on the right, you're gonna have the text to speech function. You can just choose whatever voice you want. And for example, I'm just going to choose here. This is British just a test of the text. And start reading it. And then CapCut is just going to transform it into audio and it's going to appear down here. But what you can do right now is click on this voice over here and just come to Auto Captions. And when you click Create, CapCut is already going to create captions for all of the voices in your video. So here I can just delete whatever I typed here before. And if you play it right now, this is just a test of the text to speech function and the auto captions. You're gonna be able to see that it just works perfect according to the voice that was created. Now, if you just want to change all the subtitles the way that you prefer, you can just select all of them and come up here and choose whatever you want for them. You can change the font size if you want. You can change here the way that they look. You can change on screen their size, color, shape, effect. So handy, practical, and it's super fast. Now, one thing that you might have noticed is that when I drag this clip onto the timeline, you can see the video, but you cannot see the audio yet. So if you wanna see it, you have to right click over here and you have to click separate audio. And now you're gonna be able to see also the audio from that clip down here in the audio part. But by default, they are not linked together. So you can just move them around freely like this whenever you want. But if you wanna have them stuck together, you can just select them both together like this and just go to group. And now you're gonna be able to move it like this. So in the audio tab, for example, if you just want to add a sound effect, you can just come to sound effects over here, choose whichever you prefer, like for example, taking a photo and click the plus button. And then it's just going to add it here with the name on it so that you can see it very clearly. So you can just position it wherever you want and just press play. Now, something really cool about stickers, effects and filters is that they are added as adjustment layers. And these are just layers that sit on top of your footage and they hold the effect that you're applying meaning that you can move them around and change the way that they interact with the rest of the video independently. This way, they're not attached to a video clip that is on your timeline in any way. Now, to change some of the effects, you can just click them on the timeline like this, and you're gonna be able to see up here in the inspector if you can change something. In this case, for example, on the viewfinder effect, there's nothing you can do. 
But if you click on this rolling film effect, for example, you can change the filters and also the speed in which it rolls. So it's going to depend on what you choose. And if you're looking for a proper adjustment layer like you have on other editing softwares, they have it also. So if you go to the adjustment icon, it's just going to add this adjustment layer on top of everything and you can change the color grading or add a LUT to all of your videos. Now, if you're creating a loop video, this makes it so much easier because you can just select everything, copy and paste it at the end so that you see if the connection between the end and the beginning is working flawlessly. At least this is the way that I prefer doing it so that I don't have to check it after it's already exported. So to test if the loop is working, I'm just going to select everything over here. I can right click and go to copy go here to the end and be sure that I'm on the edge here and just click paste. It's gonna paste it a little bit in front so you can just drag it behind before it snaps and now you're gonna be able to see if the loop just works perfectly or if you have to adjust something. And in this case, it's working just fine so I can just finish over here and export this video. Okay, so to export, all you have to do is come up here to export and now we're just gonna give it a name, whatever here. You can choose the folder where it's going to be exported. The resolution can be up to 4K. The bitrate is going to dictate how good the final file is going to be. But this number depends a lot on how good the original footage was. So if you're not sure, set it to higher. If you know precisely how much you want, you can click customize and set the bitrate over here. Codec can be H.264 or H.265 and the format MOV or MP4. On frame rate, you have the options between 24 and 60 FPS and you could set a cover if you wanted. Now, if you just hit export, it's going to export over here and you can see the progress bar for these 10 seconds reels, it's going to be super fast. And it already offers you the options to publish it on YouTube or TikTok. And in this case, I thought the integration was going to be stronger with the video already appearing in the publish page, but actually it's just a link to the desktop upload page. So it's practical, but you still have to select the file and upload it so that you can post it on TikTok or YouTube. All right, if you have any comments, suggestions, or if you know anything else that I didn't mention in this video about CapCut Desktop, please write them in the comment section below. This way we all help each other out. And if you create a cool video using this, please tag me at FlyEnry so that I can check it out. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. If you wanna keep watching something interesting, just check out this video over here that YouTube is recommending you right now. And I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.